distinguished members, supporters, and sympathizers of the All People's Congress Party. My fellow Australians, a very good evening. It is with profound gratitude and deep appreciation that I speak to you this evening on the report of the Tripartite Committee. First and foremost, I wish to thank each one of you for your unwavering patience and steadfast support during the period of the Tripartite Committee's work. Your resilience and commitment for national peace, unity, and security as we pursue our course have been nothing short of inspirational. Let us remind ourselves as what led to the formation of the Tripartite Committee. This committee was born out of a necessity by both the APC and the SLPP government, supported by our international supporters, to restore faith in our electoral processes and to ensure that the will of the people is upheld in the most transparent and credible manner possible. On June 24, 2023, Sierra Leone held its multi-tier elections, which included presidential, parliamentary, mayoral, and local council elections. The Electoral Commission for Sierra Leone, ECSL, declared incumbent president Julius Madabio as the winner with 56.1% of the votes. However, this announcement was met with significant resistance and allegations of irregularities from the opposition, the All People's Congress Party, and local and international election observers. The APC, along with several observers, raised serious concerns about the electoral process before, during, and after the elections. This included a widely condemned midterm census, the introduction of the district block proportional representation system with limited consultation, the high threshold that restricted smaller parties' participation, and issues with the voter register. Operational challenges such as the poor quality of voter identification cards and delayed delivery of ballot boxes further exacerbated the situation. Allegations of bias and partisanship within the ECSL cast a shadow over its integrity and impartiality, not only to conduct the elections, but also to announce the election results. These issues led to heightened state of tension and mistrust between the ruling SLPP government and the opposition APC. To address this political impasse, a three-day mediated dialogue was organized from October 16 to 18. This dialogue was facilitated by esteemed bodies, including the African Union, ECOWAS, the Commonwealth, and the Independent Commission for Peace and national cohesion. Through these efforts, the agreement for national unity was signed between the government of Sierra Leone and the APC. A key outcome of this agreement was the establishment of the Cross-Party Committee on Electoral Systems and Management Bodies Review, known as the Tripartite Committee. This committee was tasked with a vital mission to review and examine the electoral systems, structures, and processes of the 2023 elections and previous electoral cycles. Its mandate included assessing the legal framework, operational capacity of the ECSL, and proposing reforms to enhance transparency and credibility in future elections. The committee was co-chaired by the government, the APC, and the development partners, and was composed of seven members each from the government and the APC. Its deliberations also included 
engagements with representatives from civil society organizations, other critical state institutions, and a wide spectrum of stakeholders across the country, thereby ensuring a comprehensive and inclusive approach to its work. This was an immense undertaking, one that required meticulous attention to detail and a collaborative spirit. The committee was given a time frame within which to complete these tasks. And despite the complexity and breadth of the issues at hand, significant progress was made. And on another momentous day, on July 1, 2024, the committee presented its report, including an outline framework of implementation of its findings and recommendations. I would like at this stage to extend my deepest gratitude to the APC team, ably led by Dr. Kaifala Mara. The team comprised Dr. Richard Conte, Honorable Ambassador Almami Pejito Kuruma, Lawyer Boniface Sidiki Kamara, Mr. David Fauna, Madam Bernadette Kago, and Mr. Prince Thorley. Their dedication and hard work have been instrumental in our efforts. Working alongside them was another group of dedicated individuals known as the Technical Committee, led by Dr. Joseph Sam Sisse. Their expertise and commitment were invaluable in navigating through the various operational, legal, and electoral issues. Through determined negotiation and collaboration, both the SLPP and APC teams successfully agreed on 80 crucial points. This is a testament to what can be achieved when we come together in the spirit of unity and purpose. Fellow Australians, in any group endeavor, the differences in opinion, approach, and results are inevitable. This diversity is reflected in the Tripartite Committee's report, which comprises two divergent perspectives, one submitted by the APC representatives and the other by the SLPP representatives. As stated on page 53 of the report, the APC holds that statistical inconsistencies call into question the results declared by the ECSL and demands a rerun of the 2023 elections to be facilitated by the ECOWAS Commission and the immediate resignation of the personnel of electoral management bodies. The government, on the other hand, maintains that the results as declared by the ECSL are valid. These divergent positions are fully articulated in the respective analysis annexed to the tripartite report. Yes, this diversity and other very important contentious issues, including ensuring the transparency and credibility of electoral processes, addressing the legal framework governing elections, and accountability and improving the operational efficiency of the ECSL remain unresolved. These are currently at the top of our priority list and we are working diligently with our international development partners to resolve them expeditiously. Fellow Australians, we have consistently demonstrated our belief in the tenets of democracy and in every democratic election, it is vital that as voters, we understand how our votes are counted and who among all the candidates received the highest number of votes based on a transparent and fair counting process. Unfortunately, this fundamental right has been denied to us as voters by the Electoral Commission of Sierra Leone. The ECSL 
has failed to provide transparency in how the votes were tallied. One of the excuses is that they are not required by the Constitution of Sierra Leone to be transparent in this regard. Another excuse is that the results reconciliation forms, RRFs, are classified information. This lack of transparency is deeply troubling. Moreover, the ECSL has been unable to produce any credible evidence of the members of the numbers they assigned to all candidates in the elections. Equally alarming is the fact that the SLPP party, which was declared the winner, has also failed to provide any credible evidence to support the votes they were assigned. It is indeed strange that both the elections management body and the party declared as winners cannot produce tangible evidence to support their claims. This coincidence is too significant to ignore. Furthermore, the APC provided evidence in the form of verifiable results reconciliation forms, RRFs, from 70.2% of polling stations nationwide, signed by the ECSL officials, party agents, and observers, showing that Dr. Samura Kamara had a commanding lead with 57.15% of the votes, making it impossible for the SLP candidate to win at the first ballot. The APC has also been able to demonstrate the gross inconsistencies and mathematical impossibilities in the ECSL's partial 60% and final 100% announced presidential results. It is noteworthy that this only confirmed reports as skepticism by local and international elections observers. Considering these findings, one of our key recommendations is for a rerun of the elections to be conducted by ECOWAS immediately. This step is essential to restoring the faith of the people in our electoral process and ensuring that the true will of the Australian people is reflected in the results. The integrity of our electoral process is the bedrock of our democracy. The voters of Sierra Leone deserve to know that their votes are counted accurately and transparently. The ECSL's refusal to provide this transparency undermines the very foundation of our democratic system. Our voters must have faith in the electoral process, and it is the duty of the ECSL to ensure this faith is upheld. The failure to produce the RRFs and the subsequent excuses offered are unacceptable. We must demand accountability and transparency in our elections to maintain the trust of the people. Let us stand together in our demand for a transparent and fair electoral process. Let us continue to support the principles of democracy and ensure that the will of the people is respected and actually reflected in the election results. The ABC party leadership and I have been, for the past 12 months, totally immersed in the struggle for electoral justice, the fight to protect your votes. This has been a very difficult battle to save our democracy. At the same time, we have had to navigate the rough seas of doubters, misinformers, disinformers, and distractors. And I can assure you that it has not been easy, but also not insurmountable. In spite of these troubles, it is my firm conviction that our country must now depart from the old normal, which is the business as usual style of politics. There can be no progress, no democracy, no development where the people are ignored and deprived of their right to choose. This is the desired politics for the people. 
in light of what we see happening in many parts of the world, it will be insane for us, political leaders, civil society and international partners, to disregard the people's demand for electoral justice in Sierra Leone. The sword that was opened in June 23 cannot be healed unless it is cleaned. What's happened in Sierra Leone in June 2023 is a precedent, a very bad precedent, which if not corrected, will be a template for future political parties to copy. In this regard, those who think that the same ECSL that conducted the disastrous 2023 elections will miraculously change and conduct a clean, credible and transparent elections in 2028 are certainly dreaming. New laws will not change old bad habits. Therefore, if the current ECSL leadership and personnel are not held accountable for the mismanagement of elections in 2023, they will surely be emboldened and will close the ranks in order to deal the final blow on democracy in Sierra Leone. Fellow Sierra Leoneans, I have chosen to address you through this medium and not through a press conference because the memories of the days following the 2023 elections are still fresh in my mind. We lost Nos Mahawa and White Boy when state security forces shot at APC supporters who had gathered at our party headquarters in anticipation of the announcement of ECSL results. May the souls and the souls of all those who lost their lives at the hands of security forces in that election rest in perfect peace. My people, I may have my faults, but one thing I've been very careful to avoid is to allow my ambition for power to put the lives of my innocent supporters at risk. For some people, this may appear as a weakness, but I am convinced that it is a measure of respect for the dignity of human lives. At the same time, many have accused me unjustly of selling out the right of the people. Both actions are not and will never ever be my way of life. My personal choice remains to avoid these acts and remain as always throughout my fulfilled professional career, a trusted servant of the people and country. Where I come from, honesty, reliability, and integrity are compelling and demonstrated priorities. I do not believe in using the bullet or money to win power simply because I don't know how to do that. And in if I have the power to do so, I certainly would not. What are the next steps? To my fellow comrades of the APC, I say that at this point, the battle for electoral justice must now be owned by all levels of leadership in the APC, from ward to constituency, from district to region, and from Samura Kamara to the party leadership. This is not a time for recrimination. It is a time to look at the cumulative turn of events that have brought us to where we are as of now. We cannot continue to be enablers of such massive electoral fraud. If we do not unite to save democracy now, trust me, we will lose the soul of our party forever. As a party, we need to demonstrate a willingness to defend the rights of our people. The National Party leadership has been very active to bring us to where we are today. It is now the responsibility of the party to unite around the continued fight for electoral justice. The social community, civil society organizations, the media, religious leaders, and traditional heads may be diplomatic, but cannot be neutral in terms of upholding the truth and ensuring that the right thing is done 
in the interest of the citizens of this country. They have been in many ways an integral part of this journey, providing strategic, technical, advisory, and financial support. They must continue to bear responsibility, likewise, for any fundamental slippages going forward in our urge for freedom and democracy. Together, we must all stand for electoral truth and justice. Whatever it takes, the mandate of the people should take precedence over the convenience of a political party or personal political ambition. The implementation phase of the recommendations in the tripartite committee's report soon to follow cannot and must not ignore addressing the inconclusive matter of the election results. Emphasis on electoral management, legal and institutional reforms, though important going forward, can never ever cure the electoral wrongs of 2023 elections. And that is why, as a People's Party, the APC will continue to demand a rerun. This recommendation by the APC for a rerun of the elections is the only way that this mercy can return to government and democracy rescue. There has been a huge gap between what the electorates are seeking and what we are giving them as politicians. Going to the 2023 elections, the people were increasingly angered by the high cost of living, the collapse of our currency, high taxation, high cost of electricity, transportation, and food items, public institutions wrecked by unprecedented politicization and state capture, stagnating economic growth, and diminishing opportunities for employment and better livelihoods. It was against this background of untold hardship that the people came out in huge numbers against all odds to vote for change of political party and political leadership, which was denied. The ECSS election results make stark reading. The APC and I will continue to honor the trust you place in us, and I personally will continue to appreciate and honor your trust and strength in me. It is not over until it is over. It is not done and dusted. The contentious issues are not just important. They are crucial for the integrity and future of our democratic process. We are fully committed to resolving them in a manner that upholds the principles of transparency, fairness, and accountability that our people deserve. I want to emphasize that the dialogue continues and we are not relenting in our pursuit of justice and truth. Building and strengthening democracy is a lifetime journey. We must continue talking to each other and moving together. Let us all think of our legacy in Israel Leone that is in post-conflict and democratic transition. The APC is steadfast in ensuring that every vote is counted accurately and transparently, and that the will of the Israelian people is respected. Our commitment to democracy and the rule of law remains unwavering. Let us not be swayed by doubts or misinformation. The journey to resolving these issues is ongoing. We are making significant progress. Understandably, public attention and interest have been focused on the conclusions and report of the Tripartite Committee. However, it should not be forgotten, there are other important aspects of the Agreement for National Unity which still remain unaddressed or unconcluded. These include, among others, the release of political prisoners, the removal of politically motivated court cases, the safe return of persons in exile for political reasons, and setting up a mechanism for sustainable inter-party dialogue. 
The spirit of the agreement is also meant to put an end to the targeted harassment and intimidation of the opposition, directly or indirectly. Your support and patience are invaluable as we navigate this complex and vital process. I urge you all to continue to stay peaceful, united, and hopeful. Together, we'll continue to push for a resolution that reflects the true voice of the people and a sharp, prosperous future. We serve a just God. He, and only He, can fight our battles. I thank you. God bless our beloved Serenium.